You see the old Daniel Bryan, the Daniel Bryan that these people loved. That Daniel Bryan is dead. The Yes Movement is dead. And all, and all that's left is you. The new Daniel Bryan. The WWE Champion. And the only thing that matters is that you never, ever give up on your dream, ever, ever again! Hello and welcome to the official wrestling newspaper podcast. I'm your host, Daniel. Today we're going to be talking about the week in professional wrestling and mainly the fallout from Survivor Series 2018. Um, Just a quick intro, this is our first weekly podcast, Uh, we've got a Twitter page which I'm sure most of you follow us on, at Wrestle Newspaper, Um, that's Wrestle News P-A-P-R, just quickly, this is basically, we're just going to give podcasting a go, we're just going to see how it goes, hopefully you enjoy the show, and yeah, so let's get into the main stories, the main stories from Survivor Series were Raw beating Smackdown 6-0. I actually couldn't believe that. We had Brock Lesnar beating Daniel Bryan in a very, very good match. It was a really good match. Um, We also had Ronda Rousey and Charlotte, where Ronda Rousey won via disqualification after Charlotte went heel on her. She attacked with a kendo stick. She hit a finish onto a chair. She pilmanized Ronda. Not that Ronda sold it the next night, but hey, we'll get into that later on. So yeah, those were the main things to come out of Survivor Series. You obviously had Enzo Amore, who decided to, well, he tried to hijack the show and he failed horrendously, really. He made his big his big entrance, you could say, as he stood on his chair whilst the camera was on the foreign commentators. So people missed that. And then the camera crew, they got onto this by the time the match between AOP and Sheamus and Cesaro had started and they basically managed to cut him all out. I'm sure you've all seen the videos what an idiot. Right. Anyway, let's get into, for me, the main talking point it, from the fallout for Survivor Series. And I'm just going to start by reading you a tweet from Shane McMahon, which he tweeted after Survivor Series. This wasn't the night I had in mind for Team Blue. Tomorrow is a new day, but something is going to have to change come Tuesday. Hashtag Survivor Series. Now, to me, to you, to everyone out there, that indicates something, a big angle is coming on Tuesday night, whether it's Shane turning heel, as Dave Meltzer reported the other week, something big is going to come out, you're expecting firings, you're expecting, you're expecting a lot anyway, and what happens, absolutely nothing, Shane comes out on Ms. TV in a meaningless segment, it was a comedy segment, Shane's smiling, he's not talking about anything to do with Survivor Series, I couldn't believe it. What He won the best in the world to determine the best in the world tournament the other week from Survivor Series. I mean, from Crown Jewel. He then goes into this big story with his sister where he's saying that he can't lose. He's Stephanie can't have the bragging rights. They go to the extent of having Raw beat SmackDown 6-0. to zero, And nothing comes of it. I, I was... I couldn't believe that. I think that's probably the main talking about. It's just WWE not capitalising on the stories that they've set. To me, it just says, why am I going to bother with Survivor Series next year? Do you know what I mean? It's This story was effectively meaningless. They did they followed it up with a comedy segment, and then it goes over to the commentators, and they just change the subject and brush it off. That's that. Done and dusted, it would appear. So yeah, I don't really want to start the show on a negative, but I suppose when you're reviewing Raw and SmackDown, that's pretty much how it's going to be. Um, anyway, after that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into Raw for you. Um, Braun Strowman, injured. He needs el- surgery on his elbow. He'll be out of action for four to six weeks. This didn't stop them announcing Braun versus Corbin in a TLC match. 
at the pay-per-view next month, where if Braun wins, he will face Brock Lesnar at the Royal Rumble. And if Corbin wins, he'll be the permanent GM of Raw. If not, he'll be fired. So yeah, that's that's a big match for the Survivor, for Survivor Series, for the TLC pay-per-view. Um, I think it's probably a good thing that they've done a gimmick match for these two, as they're not really the best technical wrestlers, you could say. But yeah, so that leads into a elimination tag match between Braun, Finn and Elias against the team of Corbin, McIntyre and Ziggler. Um, this match, it went, it went a long time. I think it went almost 30 minutes, actually. Um, and it was a long time to sit through just for a no contest. Uh, after the match, McIntyre, Ziggler... And Corbin, they destroy Braun. It was, a, it was a long segment. It must have been like eight to ten minutes of a beatdown. The completely right off Corbin's elbow. Corbin's elbow. Braun's elbow. So, yeah. So, basically, that, that was that. Braun has been written off TV for the upcoming weeks, you'd say. He'll, they're hoping that he's going to be back for TLC. They're hoping. Hopefully, he is. As, you know, I think we've had enough last-minute replacements in big pay-per-view matches recently. From the WWE, hopefully that's coming to an end. But I tell you, there's a lot of injuries, isn't there, at the moment? You've had Braun. There's just loads of injuries seemingly coming from WWE at the moment. Everyone says that New Japan's the strong style and WWE's the safe style, but WWE seems to be picking up a lot more injuries at the moment. Right, I'm not going to go through every match from Raw because I think there was a lot. There was a lot of crap, really. There wasn't. There was a lot of filler. Do you know what I mean? Not much, really. Of, worth talking about so we'll get into Ronda Rousey Ronda Rousey she comes out fresh off a beat down from Charlotte he was expecting what maybe crutches a neck brace nothing she comes out she's smiling she's fine she's pulling gifts out of a bra to give to children make that what you will she comes out she I was a bit worried she was going to get booed as I say Raw was in the same arena as Survivor Series where she was pretty much booed out of the building but the crowd, they was actually, they was all right with her. No, there wasn't, wasn't that much heat. She was cheered. Um, she says that she's going to face Nia Jax at the TLC pay-per-view. But after that, she wants to get her revenge on Charlotte, which hopefully results in a match at the Royal Rumble. I'm not really sure how they're going to get there, but I think that's where they're going to go. They're going to go for the Royal Rumble match. Um, anyway, this results in a match with Mickey James, a two-minute match. Now, I listened to a few people's reviews of this, and they have been shitting on Ronda, basically saying that she was terrible in this match. It was a two-minute match, do you know what I mean? How terrible could you possibly be in a two-minute match? It wasn't a rehearsed match, which obviously her main pay-per-view matches have been rehearsed, which I don't think helps, but it was a two-minute match. It did its job. She won. It sort of like makes her look dominant after the showing weakness against Charlotte last night, so I was fine with it. Um, Naya and Tamina come down after the match. They stare her down. They leave. And that was that. So you've got you've got Ronda against Nia at the pay-per-view. You've got Braun against Corbin at the pay-per-view. Um, I don't think they're going to be the best matches, but well, we'll have to wait and see for that. Um, other main talking points on Raw this was Ambrose mentioning that Roman deserved to have cancer, pretty much. Now that, you've got... Do we have, they're using this to get heat, aren't they? They've always done... A lot of people are fuming about it, but if you've been watching WWE for a long time, you know that this is what happens. I remember Randy Orton telling Rey Mysterio that Eddie isn't up there, he's down there in hell. And it, it's not right, really, but that's just what WWE do. And I'm, if you've fan for this long, you've pretty much learned to accept that. I'm sure they wouldn't have done it if Roman wasn't comfortable with them mentioning that. Maybe they would, but anyway. So yeah, so they had, they had a show-long storyline where... Rollins is trying to find Ambrose. It, it ends in, obviously, Rollins and Ambrose having a brawl in the ring. Ambrose hits dirty deeds on Rollins twice. And that was it. They would... Overall, this Raw, for a, for a fallout from a big, from a really good pay-per-view, it was a bit disappointing. I felt they should have capitalised on the momentum they had from that show last night. But they didn't really seem to do that. Um, sometimes you get that, though. These fallout shows from pay-per-views, I feel like... Sometimes not a lot happens, and the main stuff happens the week after, if you know what I mean. But this was one of those shows. You you got a couple of announcements for the matches upcoming, but there wasn't really much else. There was a lot of filler on the show. It just felt like it wasn't 
really a raw worm. A lot happened. Obviously, you had the Braun Strowman injury angle, but apart from that, um, that was that really. I, I was a bit disappointed with Raw. Um, so anyway, so I'm going to go to a few tweets that I've received from the followers at Wrestling Newspaper's Twitter page. I'm going to read them out to you. Shay Shank says, Wasted opportunity. Better to follow Becky's tweets than watch Raw. We're not going to disagree with that. Becky's tweets have been brilliant, at which we will get into later on in the show. As she has a cracking tweet she delivers to Chris Jericho. Um, Bowler Gravy, great Twitter handle, has said, Don't watch Raw anymore. Always end up turning it off within the first hour. Mm, uh, to be honest with you, I'm actually in that boat. As I usually stay up till 1 in the morning over here in the UK. And I think, I'll oh, go on, I'll watch Raw. By 2am, the TV's off, I'm asleep, and I'm watching it the next morning. KSG Official has tweeted saying, Not bad, some story developments. Yeah, I'd go along with that. It wasn't terrible, it wasn't great. A few stories did get advanced, so... Yeah, you would have hoped for a bit more. Do you know what I mean? They're a lot of people... Traditionally, the highest rating WWE gets for these Raw shows is the night after a big pay-per-view. So the eyes were on the show, and I just felt they didn't really do that. But as I say, they did develop some stories. Anyway, onto our Twitter poll, where we either go with two ticks, which is the highest, or minus ticks, which is the lowest. One tick and zero ticks are in between. Don't worry, it's not an STD. It's, it's just a poll, basically. So two ticks got 13%. One tick got 32%, zero ticks got 26%, and minus ticks 29%. So not many of you thought it was a great show. The majority thought it was all right to bad. So average to bad is pretty much the rating that this show gets. Okay, if you stay with us, we're going to get into SmackDown after this quick music break. Thank you. Hello, back on the show, and we're going to get into the review of SmackDown for you now. But first, I'm just going to read you a few notes. And there's a rumour going around that Alexa Bliss, I don't know if you've seen this on Twitter, Alexa Bliss is going to be named the Raw GM after TLC. Um, obviously, it's just a rumour, but I, th- I think that'd be good. She she looks quite good when she came out for the uh, the opening segment at the Raw UK show with, Cor- with Baron Corbin. She looked good. Um, I think she could be a, a good GM. Um, yeah, so another bit of news from Raw. John Cena, he's going to be back wrestling on house shows over the Christmas period. Um, and he's scheduled to make his TV return on the January 7th Raw from the Amway Centre in Orlando. So John Cena back. He usually does come back around New Year time. He'll probably, I don't know, he'll start an angle or maybe just declare himself for the Royal Rumble probably. Yeah, but it'll be good to have Cena back. I know a lot of people haven't liked Cena over the years, but I quite like him. Do you know what I mean? He's he's a, brings a bit of star quality. You're always going to be interested in his segment or match on the show. Anyway, we're going to get into SmackDown. Um, this was... I, I'm going to be honest. I was a bit disappointed with this show. I was expecting big things from SmackDown after Charlotte turning heel... You had them losing 6-0, so you was expecting something big to come out of the show. Um, Shane had promised that he was going to shake things up. And it was it was just like Raw, really. It was a run-of-the-mill show. Not too much going on. Um, the show opens with Charlotte coming out. And this was quite good. She comes out. She, she was still baby-faced, but with that heel attitude. She says that she did it for Becky. Um the, the Iconics come out. She destroys the Iconics. The beatdown, I thought, was a little bit clunky. That's probably because you've got the Iconics who aren't really the best sellers and workers out there. But, yeah, she beats down the Iconics. I was At one point, I thought Becky might come out for the save when the Iconics were beating down Charlotte. But Charlotte quickly turned that round. So, yeah, we got a traditional New Day holiday-themed match. 
I tweeted my displeasure about this, as to be honest with you. Every Halloween, every well, every time there's a holiday in America, you just know the new day are gonna come out and they're gonna have one of these stupid matches and you you just watching the TV and I'm relieved that I'm watching it on my own. Because if any of my family was watching it, I'd be embarrassed. Sort of like what happened with Drake Maverick at Survivor Series. It's just a bit embarrassing when they're having a food fight match. It's just... I suppose the kids like it, but... Are any kids watching SmackDown and Raw at the moment? I know that I always hear that it's over 50s that are the main viewer of Raw and SmackDown. And I don't know if that's exactly what over 50s want to see. Except Vince, who loves shit comedy. But anyway... So yeah, so we had Miss TV, as we've already got into. Shaney, no sold, losing 6 0. There was nothing coming out of it. Two jobbers come out after Shane says Shane and Miz decide they're going to be a tag team. Are they clearly gonna go well, I do you know, I'd predict they're gonna go with a Shane Miz match at a pay-per-view, maybe the Rumble and Mania in the future, but I, I'm not predicting anything anymore because I could have promise you that Shane would have done a big story coming out of this show, but nothing. Um, yeah, so they have a tag team match with two jobbers, and the jobbers get the roll-up victory on The Miz. No, I'm not joking. The man who I keep hearing his main event in WrestleMania with Daniel Bryan, which I don't believe, but his main event in WrestleMania with Daniel Bryan, apparently he is rolled up by a jobber and loses. So make of that what you will. The best thing on the show for me was the Daniel Bryan promo. I thought this was absolutely fantastic. I thought he needed to come out and he needed to give answers about what happened when he turned heel on AJ last week. And it needed to be good because personally, I completely disagreed with turning Daniel Bryan heel. I thought you had, you've been gifted a great story to tell. The man who was forced to retire, coming out of retirement and he was going to come back. And you have the story there. He could come back. He could win the Royal Rumble. He could win the title at WrestleMania. And have that happy moment that everybody wanted. But they threw all that away, in my opinion, when they turned him heel. Now, I'm willing to give it a chance. Because if there's one thing we can do, right? It's book heels. They can't book baby faces, but they can book heels. And here they did a good job. Um, Obviously, I think it helps that Brian himself, actually, it turns out, wanted to turn heel. So Vince gave him the green light to turn heel and he turned heel. He won the WWE Championship from AJ Styles last week. And then he comes out tonight and he explains this. He comes out. I love this spot where he comes out. He does the yes chant and then he looks at the crowd with disdain and he stops the yes chant. Brilliant introduction for his entrance. So he comes out. He blames himself for giving up on his dreams He said that when he came back, the yes chants, they were loud at first and that each week they slowly faded out. He states that the old Daniel Bryan is dead. The yes movement is dead. And this is the new Daniel Bryan, the WWE champion, Daniel Bryan. As I say, this was a great promo. Um, He even talked about how I think he had the chamber, which was supposed to help his his injuries that he'd been doing each each week, every day he'd been going to this chamber, I can't think of the exact term for it, but he'd been doing this chamber and he brought it out and sort of built into the story that doing the three hours of this work in the chamber had sort of affected his mental state to the point where this new heel character had come from. And I thought that was a great touch on the angle. So, yeah, so Daniel Bryan is now a heel. He's, Smackdown don't have a top heel. They've been swapping from Samoa Joe to Randy Orton. I think Rusev, well, Rusev, I don't even know what he is, but he'd faced AJ Styles at the pay-per-view. They had a run with Nakamura being the heel who faced AJ Styles month after month on pay-per-view, and that didn't work. But now we've got a heel champion. Daniel Bryan is the number one heel on SmackDown. And although I say, I I would have preferred personally if they could have booked the babyface triumphant return story, but they can't book faces. So they've done the next best thing, and they're going to try and book him as a top heel, hopefully, Hopefully for Brian that works out. So there, this was the best thing on the show. It was a great promo. Well done for Brian. Brilliant stuff here. Um, also, it's been announced for TLC. It's going to be Daniel Bryan defending the title against AJ Styles at TLC in a traditional wrestling match, it would appear. Now, I'm all for that. These two, the two of the best workers in... in you know, not even in WWE. The two of the best workers in the world. 
I want to see them just go out and wrestle. I don't want to have a goofy gimmick match with the crowd chanting, we want tables, which is the most annoying chant in wrestling. Um, ladders, I have no interest in Brian in a ladder match at all. It's just not worth it. Go out there. These two can have a killer wrestling match with Brian as the heel and AJ as the babyface. And I'm sure it will be brilliant. You know what I mean? You give, as they've given Corbin and Strowman the gimmick match, that's fine. They can have their gimmick match. And Brian and AJ can have the wrestling match. Watch, I'll say this, and next week it'll turn into a TLC match. Hopefully that's not the case, though. Okay, so your main event on SmackDown was Randy Orton versus Rey Mysterio. This was billed as the first time they faced off on SmackDown in 12 years. Obviously, they had a match at Crown Jewel the other week. Um, this was It was just... I think, I think the match probably went about 10 minutes. It was a good match. It was all right. Um, these two are obviously great in the ring together. They had matches. I remember the match at No Way Out in 2006. That was a great match uh, where Randy won to become the number one contender to face Kurt Angle at WrestleMania. And then Mysterio later got added to the match. But that was a great match. They have had they had some good matches um, on SmackDown. I think in 2005, one of the matches main evented the show. And I remember that being a very good match. This was, as I say, this is, it's pretty amazing, really, that 12 years later, they're still really good workers. Obviously, Orton doesn't really deliver great matches constantly anymore, but when he's up for it, he can go out there and have a good match. But yeah, so the story ended, the match ended, sorry, with um, Orton. What an RKO. So Mysterio does his sliding thing underneath the bottom rope, straight into an RKO. It was a brilliant spot. I tweeted it out, so just go on the go on my Twitter uh, at Wrestling Newspaper to have a look at that. I tweeted that out. Great RKO. Throws him back in the ring. RKO one two three beats Mysterio clean. He then tears his mask off. So this feud must continue, and I'm guessing they all have a match at TLC, where I'm guessing Mysterio gets his win back. Do you know what I mean? I, I think Mr. I'd like him to go with Mysterio. And Brian down the line, I think that'd be good. So maybe if Mysterio can win at TLC, he could go on to face Daniel Bryan maybe at the Royal Rumble. But yeah, so that was SmackDown. It's not a lot happening. There was a lot of there was a lot of filler. It the show really only got going in the last half an hour with the Bryan promo and the Orton Mysterio match. So yeah, so it was a bit disappointing, really. I say the the criminal thing of the show. As I've I know I've gone on about it, but I, I was fuming. I was literally pissed off i just felt like they'd thrown back the great survivor series shot in our face by not following up on the shame that man raw beating smackdown six nil stuff it, it really did piss me off but hey it's wwe what do you expect so anyway so i'm going to get into the poll for smackdown Um so I, i'm not even sure i could agree with this but two ticks got 33 percent and won the poll so the majority of people out there think SmackDown was great. So maybe they love the Shane McMahon comedy segment with the Miz. Hey, each to their own. But anyway, so two ticks won that poll. So this, by your reckoning, was a great SmackDown. I don't agree with that. But anyway, so I'm going to get to a few tweets that you've tweeted to me about SmackDown. Um, Danny J. Pond said, Very little point to a dominant victory storyline. We've already got into all of this. I'm sure you don't want to hear about it again, but I completely agree with that. Bubba J says, so much for massive changes to SmackDown again. So, yeah, another person that agrees that they shouldn't, they didn't really do what they should have done with the 6 0 storyline. Anyway, so we're going to get into some news now coming out of the SmackDown show. Um, they've announced that Nakamura. And Rey Mysterio will appear on Miz TV at the Starcade House show this weekend. So I'm not sure. Where, I'd, I'd actually like to see a Nakamura Mysterio feud, but as I say, it looks like Mysterio's feud with Orton is going to continue. So for anyone who wants to know, um, they're going to do an hour long special of the Starcade House show on Sunday. I think it's 8 p.m. Eastern time, which off the top of my head is 1 a.m. UK time. And you'll have to have a look what it, what it is for. The other side of America, because I'm not sure about that. But I think it's 8 p.m. Eastern. They're going to do a one-hour show on that. So if any of you don't like your WWE show, which is storyline-driven, probably give this show a watch, because I've been to a lot of WWE house shows, and they're fun. 
you know, usually the baby faces win. They have good matches. There's not it's not story driven. So if you enjoy that sort of stuff, definitely check out Starcade. Okay, um, another thing that interested me after the show, the main event dark match was a heel Daniel Bryan versus a baby face Miz. So I bet that would have been interesting to see. I just personally I can't imagine cheering for the Miz over Daniel Bryan, but I know that he's popular with a lot of people out there, isn't the Miz? I, I don't mind him. I think he's always a good mid carder for me. I'm sorry if I've offended any of you diehard Miz fans out there, but so that would have been interesting. They're clearly going to do that down the road, aren't they? Heel Brian against Face the Miz. I don't think it is a WrestleMania match. I could be wrong, but I just can't see them doing that match at WrestleMania. So yeah, so that that was your SmackDown show. Um, we've reviewed Raw, we've reviewed SmackDown for you. Um, we're now going to get into the main comings out of WWE, which is basically we're going to put an end to the talk of WWE. Um, I'm going to finish with talking about, for me, the winner of the week, the loser of the week, the match of the week, and the tweet of the week. So, for me, the winner of the week is Charlotte Flair. She went from someone who, before the Survivor Series pay-per-view, coming out of the feud with Becky, she was getting a lot of boo-the-woo treatment. She was getting a bit of go-away heat for me. She was really cold. But after that, she was she's hot again after having a great match with Ronda. She became she turned heel. She's over with the crowd again. The the difference in a week for Charlotte is massive. So for me, she is the winner of the week. Now the loser of the week. I'm not going to get into why he's the loser of the week, but I think you can all guess who the loser of the week for me is, and that is Shane McMahon. He lost to his sister in an embarrassing way and didn't do anything about it. So yeah, so the loser of the week, Shane McMahon. Now the match of the week, there was a lot of contenders. So this was Brock Lesnar, Brian. There was Alistair Black, Johnny Gargano. There was Tommaso Ciampa against Velveteen Dream. Um, as a Ronda Charlotte. But for me, as I've already mentioned it, Alistair Black versus Johnny Gargano was an absolutely fantastic match. If Dave Meltzer doesn't give this match five stars, then there's something wrong, because for me, it was brilliant. It was it was either that or the Gargano Almas match, which takes WWE match of the year for me. It was brilliant. Now, a lot, I know a lot of people, I think a lot of people prefer the Velveteen Dream match, um, but that match for me, it was good, but the first 10, 15 minutes weren't great, and then it really kicked off, and it was, it was just, WWE kick a finisher, kick out your finishing match, which I, I don't mind. This match, it told a great story, the Black Gargano match. It's a great storytelling, fast action, and it wasn't kicking out of finishers constantly. It was Black Mass, Black Mass, one, two, three. Face over heel, face gets re his revenge on heel, and that is exactly what I want to see. That is just what I want to see. Um, right, your tweet of the week. This is a brilliant tweet. Be I don't know if you saw this. Becky Lynch and Chris Jericho were going back and forth on Twitter. And Jericho gives credit to Nia for Becky being so over. She basically, he basically said that if it wasn't for Nia, you would... No, I think he said, with, you're over. You're the most over women with a bit of help from Nia. So Becky, she tweets back to this by saying... Yes, Chris, the sucker punch drew blood for sure. The little known fact, though, is that I actually got the concussion from trying to listen to your last album, which was a brilliant response. Even the Iron Sheet commented on this tweet with how happy it made him. So, yeah, Becky gets the tweet of the week. I'm sure she'll be winning that competition for quite for the foreseeable, as she must have the most entertaining Twitter, as I think someone tweeted us saying that before. She's got the most entertaining Twitter. So yeah, so that's it from WWE. Um, I've not had a chance to watch NXT or 205 Live. I'll probably be talking about those shows, including the NXT UK show on next week's show when there's not been as much wrestling to watch. As I say, I'm burnt out. I mean, I've, I've got a full-time job, a little girl, and I've stayed up to watch 1am over. I've stayed up to watch NXT on Saturday. I've stayed up to watch Survivor Series Sunday, Raw Monday, 
SmackDown Tuesday, all 4 a.m. finishes and then gone to work the next day. So I've been a bit burnt out, so I've not had time to watch the NXT or the 205 Live or NXT UK shows. So yeah, next week we'll be talking more in depth about the NXT 205 Live shows for you. Because I'm sure there's fans out there of these shows, or if you're not, you just want to hear what's going on. So we'll be talking about those next week. Um, Obviously we'll be talking about the Starcade show next week, Raw, SmackDown, your thoughts... So yeah, so we're going to branch out of that now. After the break, we're going to be talking about New Japan. We're going to be talking about the independent scene, um, news from the independent scene, news from wrestling, especially one of the sad news was the wrestler that got hit by the cinder block. We'll be getting into that. We'll be talking about matches that are upcoming. Um, A show that I watched last week, the Rev Pro Show, we'll be talking about that. We'll be talking about a match from Progress. So yeah, we'll be talking about what's coming up this weekend. So stay with us, and after the break, we will be discussing the following... That theme never gets old, does it? Absolutely brilliant theme. Anyway, welcome back, everyone. As I said before the break, we're now going to be moving things on from WWE, and we're going to begin by talking about New Japan Pro Wrestling. Um, at the moment, the World Tag League is going on in New Japan. Um, I think we might be up to day four now. Um, obviously, but with that much WWE and independent shows that I've been watching this week, I have just honestly not had the time to watch any of the New Japan shows, which has really annoyed me. I'm a big New Japan fan. Um, Over the weekend, I'm hoping to catch up on the World Tag League. I really want to get up to date. Um, I've heard there's been some really good matches. I think the World Tag League, we're going to probably do a feature on that on the show next week. I'm maybe hoping to do a bonus show talking about the opening three or four days of the World Tag League. There'll probably have been more days by then. Um, If that doesn't happen, there will be a feature on it on next week's show. So fear not, we will be talking everything World Tag League. Um, another note from New Japan, which is quite an exciting note. Ibushi versus Goto for the Never Openweight title. Now this match was expected to take place on January 4th at the Wrestle Kingdom show at the Tokyo Dome. However, this has now been brought forward to December the 9th on just a random house show, I believe. And this leaves the door open for Kota Ibushi versus Will Ospreay to take place at Wrestle Kingdom. Now, this was the plan for months, Ibushi and Ospreay. However, Ospreay got injured prior to Power Struggle, where he was supposed to take on Goto and win the Never Openweight title. But obviously, due to injury, that didn't happen. Now, the thought was that he wouldn't be back for the Wrestle Kingdom show. However, Osprey himself has said he's hoping to be back by the end of December. And it seems that this match, if you read between the lines, is going to go forward and it is going to happen. Um, so obviously you're expecting Ibushi to beat Goto, win the title and defend it against Osprey at Wrestle Kingdom. Now this would be a great match. It would, it, uh, you've got to say, it's probably going to steal the show if these two face each other. I was at the Rev Pro Show live in New Orleans last April and there was a six-man tag. These two ran opposite sides and towards the end of the match, these two they had a stare down and the crowd rose to its feet and they had two to three minutes of great stuff together. It was fantastic. So ever since then, me and my, well, me and my friends, we've wanted to see this match. We've said that we was hoping it would be at the Wrestle Kingdom show. Um, also, they actually, I think it was in a tag match where I think it was... Omega and Ibushi against Osprey and Okada in a tag match at Corican Hall, I think at the start of autumn, end of summer, and that was a that was almost a five star match. It was a brilliant match. These two are going to be great in the ring together, and I'm really hoping that Ibushi takes the title off Goto and faces Osprey at Wrestle Kingdom. So yeah, that'd be great. Um, and another sad note from New Japan is the the news that Hiromu Takahashi may not wrestle again um, it's really up in the air if that's the case I've never quite experienced an injury where there's been no news come out of it do you know what I mean it's like, it's like they're keeping the cards close to the chest um, the injury obviously happened back in I think it was long no it was at the San Francisco show I think the G1 special San Francisco show 
where the injury took place and that was probably like six months five six months ago now and we've not heard a lot of news about it but yeah so I think that is because they're not sure if Takahashi will wrestle again which he's 29 years old in December and it's just something it's such sad news he's such a great wrestler and we here at Wrestle Newspaper hope that we see Takahashi in the ring again but yeah it's really sad news Anyway, moving on from that to a tweet that has had a lot of reaction on our Twitter page. New Japan World Commentary Team of Kevin Kelly and Don Callis are now going to be full-time on the Access Commentary Team. Going forward, they will be replacing JR and Josh Barnett. Now, I'm a big Jim Ross fan. He's done some great stuff in wrestling. His commentary during the Attitude Era was fantastic, but... Something just doesn't quite fit for me with the New Japan commentary. I think a lot of people have been polite about his commentary. Uh, to me, I think it's been really disappointing. Do you know what I mean? People have been loyal to him and said it's been all right, but to me, it's been terrible commentary. Um, and I think it's great news that he's been replaced with Kevin Kelly, who is, for me, the best commentator in the wrestling business at the moment. He is fantastic. Um, obviously, Dan Callis will be on most of the shows with him. As I say, to be honest, it doesn't really bother me as I love Rocky Romero. So I think Rocky Romero is a brilliant commentating partner for Kevin Kelly. So he will be on some of the shows with Kelly. As obviously Callis has got his Impact Wrestling commitments. But yeah, so Kevin Kelly, the lead commentator on the Access shows. So that means also the specials that they do in America. It'll be, Cal- it'll be Callis and Kelly on the commentary teams not JR, which was the case for the Long Beach and San Francisco shows last year where we had JR, so I'm quite happy about that as we want Kevin Kelly to be on all these shows. And that's basically it for New Japan. I'd sooner have much talked in greater detail about New Japan, but as I say, I've not watched any of the World Tag League shows. Hopefully next week, I will be able to go into greater detail about those shows. Well, I will be going into greater detail about those shows. So that's everything New Japan. Um, we'll now be moving on to the independent scene and I think there's only one place to start and that is, I'm going to start with All Elite Wrestling now there's a lot of rumours going about the trademarks have been filed for All Elite Wrestling there's been a number of other trademarks filed and the rumours are that this show is going to be where the books, Cody Brandy, Hangman Page, possibly Kenny Omega and Marty Skrull are headed. Um, the rumour is that Tony Khan is the main money man behind the deal. Um, us people in the UK, we know Tony Khan for being the owner of Fulham Football Club. He's done a great job with Fulham. He took them from the Championship to the Premiership. He's really sorted that football club out. Um, I think in America he's... I'm not into the NFL, sorry about that, but I think he's the owner of one of the big teams over there, so obviously Americans know all about him. Um, obviously there was rumours a bit about Jericho and JR were going to be involved in a promotion with Khan down the line. But yes, yeah, so there's a lot of excitement going about this all-elite wrestling trademark. As I say, it's very early stages. Until they can get this TV deal, then there's nothing really to get too overly excited about but yeah that's the story the trademarks have been filed all elite wrestling there's also been a trademark filed for double or nothing which is expected to take place at some point next year as the sequel to the all in show double or nothing so i'm sure that'll be quite exciting news as i say nothing has been confirmed nothing is official but I think we pretty much know where this is going. Hopefully, something comes along because, personally, I don't want to see the elite Cody, Kenny, back in WWE. I think they're better on their own. We can, we all enjoy WWE, but I think I prefer the separate side of it with Cody and the Bucks and Omega. Separate to it, the revolutionizing the business at the moment and I'm really excited to see where it goes we can have New Japan at one side with the books and their promotion WWE at the other and all the independent scenes in the middle obviously I don't know where what the relationship between New Japan would be like with the All Elite Wrestling branch but I think I think all, all of the guys want to stay wrestling in New Japan um, I don't know how that would affect the relationship with Ring of Honor because I can't see Ring of Honor letting them use talent from their show for the All Elite Wrestling as they'd obviously be rivals against each other. 
Um, we're going to move on, um, but we're staying with someone we've just been talking about, Cody Rhodes. Now, I don't know if any of you saw this on Twitter, but a Ring of Honor fan tweeted that they wouldn't be able to make the trip to final battle because his grandma's got cancer. So they wouldn't be able to afford... They wouldn't be able to afford this. Um, so they basically put on Twitter to Cody that they wouldn't be able to afford it. So Cody Rhodes asked how much they needed, if they needed accommodation, and he has promised to pay for it, which is absolutely brilliant. I think the guy was absolutely delighted with that. So, yeah, so great on Cody. Hopefully the guy can make the trip to the final battle show and hopefully his grandma's okay with the cancer. Anyway, so, yeah, so I think that's brilliant from Cody. Um, We're now going to talk about another match, Ring of Honor final battle that has been confirmed. Now, a lot of you might not know, I'm guessing some of you do, but the match is Zack Sabre Jr. versus Jonathan Gresham. Now, I'm not sure if a lot of people have seen a lot of Jonathan Gresham, but he is absolutely phenomenal in the ring. These two are going to absolutely kill it at final battle. I urge you all to go and see that match because I can just see the two having a match of the year. They're both absolutely fantastic. If any of you want to check out a great Jonathan Gresham match, I'm not sure of the exact show, but he had a great match with Jay Lethal on a show. I think I watched it a couple of weeks after WrestleMania, so I think it will be around that time. Um, I think it was on more like a house show event than an actual main ring of honor pay-per-view but that match it was absolutely fantastic Gresham was brilliant in that match so go and check out Jay Lethal versus Jonathan Gresham that took place earlier in the year and make sure you tune in to ring of honor final battle in the middle of December for the Zack Sabre Jr. Jonathan Gresham match Um, a few other notes Um, Trevor Lee has signed for WWE and is expected to start NXT in January also, ACH has signed, and he'll be starting in January, earlier in the year. Some of you know, some of you will know ACH from his stint in New Japan earlier in the year. Um, another big story that made the news made the news over here as well this week in the Daily Mail was the wrestler being hit with the cinder block. Now, this was a tad on. If any of you saw the, well, I'm guessing most of you saw the video. This was terrible. Um, he just smashes him in the back of the head with this cinder block, knocks him out. Um, The Daily Mail have reported, quote, Puerto Rican wrestler El Cuervo suffered a a serious head injury on Monday night during a card. The wrestler was rushed to a local hospital and has had a blood clot removed. Algel O. Dominio has apologised for his mistake, stating he meant to deliver the blow to El Cuervo's back. Now, he's apologised for it, but I think the story goes that he was annoyed that he got a few stiff chair shots. And I think he just took his frustration out on the guy. We can't obviously confirm that, but I think that's the story that's going around that happened. So, yeah, I think if it's true, that I'm not sure if the guy should be wrestling again because his opponent probably won't be wrestling again. He's in a really bad state, still in hospital. I think Kurt Angle tweeted out he was fuming about the incident. Um, And I don't blame him, really. Do you know what I mean? It brings bad press to wrestling. Anyone who's not a wrestling fan is going to read that and think wrestling's ridiculous. So, yeah, that is not good. It's not good for our sport slash entertainment. We don't want stuff like that going on. Anyway, so now we're going to get into Revolution Pro. I'm a big Rev Pro fan in the UK. They're probably, for me, the number one UK promotion. I love Rev Pro. There's also Progress. There's also Fight Club Pro, which I'm a big fan of. Um, but for me, I love Rev Pro. They have a lot of the New Japan guys coming over and facing some of our UK guys. So it always makes for a great show. Check some of the Rev Pro shows out. I'd say they're brilliant. Now, this show this show is honestly the Rev Pro Uprising show from York Hall. has to be one of my favourite shows of the year. The main event was Tomohiro Ishii against David Starr. Uh, obviously, most of you all have seen Tomohiro Ishii. Great wrestler. David Starr as well. He is fantastic. His heel character in Rev Pro at the moment has been brilliant. He defended the title. Tomohiro Hiroshi defended the title against David Starr in a great main main event match. Go and check this match out. We also had Suzuki Gun, Minoru Suzuki and Zack Sabre Jr. facing Aussie Open for the British Tag Team titles. I'm not sure how familiar 
some of you are with Aussie Open, uh, that's Kyle Fletcher and Mark Davis, but they are a great tag team. Honestly, these two are going to be massive in a few years. They're absolutely brilliant Aussie Open. So yeah, go and check this match out. Probably say it was about four and four quarter star match. Brilliant match. And um, there's also another match that I want to point out from the show. Now I'm guessing a lot of you might not have heard of these two. MK McKinnon and Speedball Mike Bailey. Now a lot of you need to watch out for Speedball Mike Bailey on the independent scene because I've seen him a few times and this guy's great. And, to, and on this show, he had a fantastic match. This, for me, was the match of the show. Better than Ishii and Star. Better than Suzuki Zack against Aussie Open. MK McKinnon against Speedball Mike Bailey. I've gone four and a half stars, stars on this match. It was absolutely brilliant. Go and see this match. Honestly, absolutely brilliant match. So, yeah, I can't speak highly enough about that match. Go and see it. Um, for those of you who don't know much about Rev Pro, there's also a match in Rev Pro. I believe it is taking place tonight, and that is Neville, also known as Pac, who is going to be wrestling for Rev Pro against Speedball Mike Bailey. Now, this will be, I am sure, if given time, a fantastic match. So be sure to go and check that match out when it hits the internet and hits Rev Pro on demand. Now, I'm not sure how much, um, how many of you have been watching the Rev Pro TV. It's aired over here on the Free Sports channel. I'm not sure how people in America get that show, but it's a weekly TV show over here. I've been watching it. I'm a couple of episodes behind, but I'm probably going to do a short review on that show, on those shows next week, obviously alongside the New Japan Tag League shows. So be sure to check out those reviews. What else has happened in the UK scene? So Progress had chapter 78. Progress, it, they obviously had the big Wembley show with the Tyler Bate-Walter match, which was fantastic. But for me, Progress that isn't as hot as it was a year or two ago. They've not really had the best year. They have business-wise, as they've made quite a lot of money this year for them. Um, but they had an absolutely fantastic match on the, their show. And it was Ilya Dragunov against David Starr yet again. Ilya Dragunov is one of WXW in Germany's top talents, and this guy is absolutely fantastic. Honestly, he's going to be big in the Europe, but he already is big in the European scene. But he's the, I don't know how far he's going to go, but with WWE branching out into Germany, you never know. If I'm WWE, I want Ilya Dragunov. This guy is amazing. His facials that he has in the match are absolutely brilliant. Dragunov, he had a match with Pete Dunne on the Wembley show, and that was a, it was a really good match. It wasn't anything amazing, but it was a really good match against Pete Dunne. But this match, dragging off David Starr, was absolutely fantastic. And it for a match to get four and a half, four and three quarter stars off me, when it doesn't have a finish, it must be doing something right. Because it was just brilliant. The crowd absolutely loved this match. I had friends that went to go and see this. Shout out to Danny and Neil, and they absolutely loved the match. Um yeah, so I'll go and check that match out. There was also a great Jordan Devlin versus Chris Ridgway match on the show. Now, these two are great. Um, Devlin is in a NXT UK. I believe that he's going to be facing Pete Dunn for the NXT UK title on next week's NXT UK show. Devlin's fantastic. He has had great matches with Walter in OTT this year that are worth checking out. So, yeah, so hopefully, I'm not sure how many of you into the UK scene that are listening, but hopefully the segment on this show will it'll point you out in match, point you out in the direction for matches to go and check out. I say, I love the UK scene. I love independent wrestling. So I'm going to have a feature on that every week on the show. So, yeah, so go and check out the Ilya Dragunov versus David Starr match. Go and check out the Rev Pro Uprising show, as I'm sure you won't be disappointed. They are really, really great matches and great shows. So, yeah, so upcoming this weekend, um, there's not actually too much, I don't think, going on this weekend compared to last weekend anyway, which is probably a good thing. We can all catch up on that. I'm personally, myself, I'm going to be going to watch my local football team in a match. Um, I'm going to be spending time with my child this weekend, as well, I could do every day, to be honest, but I'll be focusing on her this weekend after the last weekend, watching wrestling most of the weekend i was tired for a lot of last weekend as i was staying up till 4 a.m so that's sunday sunday putting up the christmas tree yeah it was a bit early but putting up the christmas tree after no sleep after nxt was a really big job 
So yeah, so we've talked we've talked about New Japan. I'm hoping to go in more detail, as I said next week about New Japan. We've talked about the Indies. We talked about a few notes from the Indies. We talked about uh, the Cody Rhodes All Elite Wrestling trademark. Hopefully, we'll have more news coming out on that. We recommended Rev Pro Uprising. We talked about a few progress matches. Um, so yeah, so yeah, look, everyone check out the WWE Starcade Special on Sunday. As we've said before, I think that's 8 p.m. Eastern time in America, so check that out. Um, also taking place this weekend, which while we're on the independent scene, is the NXT UK tapings in Liverpool. Now, that isn't actually too far from me, but I'm a bit burnt out from going to... I've been to a lot of wrestling shows recently. I went to the Raw Smackdown UK shows. I went to a Fight Club Pro show last... When was that? That was last month I went to that show. Um, I'm going to Fight Club Pro 100th show next Friday as well. So, yeah, so I'm giving the NXT UK shows a miss this weekend, but my, my good mate Danny, he's going. Um, so, yeah, I'll be getting all the news from him, all the stories from the good matches from him that hopefully take place. I think the rumour is they're making a big announcement about a performance centre opening in the UK. They're also expected, Meltzer has reported, to make an announcement they're going, that they're going to be doing an NXT UK takeover at the Echo Arena in Liverpool. Now, we'll wait to see if that happens, but I'd be all for that. Hopefully, they do announce that, as I think the UK fans deserve a big show, really. Everyone over here has been itching for a pay-per-view or anything. I'd personally have sooner have an NXT show. But yeah, everyone's been itching for a show, so hopefully they give it to the UK so yeah, so that is the end of our first real show. As I say, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed producing it. This is Wrestling Newspaper's first real podcast, so I, ho- I hope it was okay for you. Um, I'd love to hear some feedback, good or bad. I'm sure people on Twitter love giving bad feedback to things, so I don't mind if it's bad feedback. As I say, this is my first, well, second podcast that I've ever done. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. Quick intro on myself. I don't really want to talk about myself too much. I've been a fan of wrestling for over 20 years now. Um, I made the wrestling newspaper Twitter pages just a way to interact with fellow wrestling fans and try to re- to produce a page where news got out quick. I just wanted to talk to people about wrestling. Um, I myself, I've got my own window cleaning company. So the average working day for me consists of listening to podcasts for five to six hours a day really. So over the months as I've grown the wrestling newspaper page, I've wanted really to do a podcast. Um, it's something I've thought about doing, and well, here it is. So I, if you could sub- subscribe, retweet, comment the podcast, that'd be great. I'd love that. Um, follow us on Twitter, at Wrestle Newspaper. So at Wrestle News, P-A-P-R. As I've said, Wrestle Newspaper handle didn't fit, so I've got to go with that stupid handle, but it'll do the job anyway so i'm hoping to be back at the start of next week with a show as i've said about all the wrestling that we've had to catch up on like the new japan tag league shows nxt uk and the rev pro tv so i'm hoping to be able to do a show on those reviewing those if that doesn't work out i will be 100 percent back in a week's time reviewing raw from monday smackdown from tuesday talking about all the new japan news the indie wrestling news. As I said, there's news every week in wrestling, so there's always going to be news. I've got an interesting Chris Jericho story you might be interested in next week, so I'm going to be talking about that on the show, so hopefully you will join us next week for the show. As I say, check the Twitter for all the news on the show. Follow, rate, retweet. Um, Oh, actually, there's been a little bit of breaking news that's emerged whilst I've been recording the show, and we're going to take a trip back to WWE. This is interesting news for everyone. Um, Dave Meltzer reports that Brock Lesnar is scheduled to face Seth Rollins at WrestleMania with the sco- there was a feud scheduled to play off Roman Reigns. Now, I'm not sure about it playing off Roman Reigns, but I'd love to see Seth Rollins against Brock Lesnar. Um, I think Rollins was that over after his Intercontinental title win at WrestleMania last year that they really needed to capitalise on that overness that he had with the crowd. But obviously the Shield stuff I felt got in the way of that a little. But yeah, I'd be really happy to see Rollins against Lesnar. I think think they had a match at Battleground, I think, when 
I think it was against yeah Lesnar against Rollins at Battleground when the Undertaker appeared and caused it a no con- contest setting up the Lesnar Taker match at SummerSlam that year. So I'd love to see that match. It'd just be great to have a top babyface winning the title off Lesnar at WrestleMania. That'd be fantastic. He'd get a great pop and we could all leave WrestleMania happy for once. As the last few times at WrestleMania that I've been to anyway, the Taker, well, retiring and Reigns beating Lesnar. It's been a bit of a cold feeling coming off WrestleMania. So, yeah, so that is quite interesting. Hopefully, we have more no- more news on that story next week. So, yeah, Rollins against Lesnar. Anyway, so I hope you've all enjoyed the show. I hope to see you all next week. I'm Daniel. This is the Wrestling Newspaper Podcast. See you later. <laughs>